was there ever a time where you considered doing something else as like a serious career? Because I mean, knowing your family and stuff, I know you, you know, you could have gone in any number of different directions. Uh, no. So, so what happened was, so my dad's, my dad's an economist and my dad's like the example of like, you go to school, you study, you, you, you go to good under, you know, he went to London school of economics, then he went to Harvard, then he worked at the world bank, you know, which a lot of people in Wikipedia all think is like an actual bank. So they think my dad's a banker, but he's an economist. Um, very different thing. And the world bank is not a bank. Try to get an account there. Unless you're a country, then you can. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So, so that was sort of the, the the groundwork that was laid, and it was successfully done in a way that reinforced. Well, that's what you got to do. I got terrible grades in school because I didn't care. I didn't. If I didn't. If I didn't care about something, I found it very hard to pay attention to it. And growing up in in Bethesda, Maryland, which you know, my parents bought a place they basically couldn't afford. Because, well, if anyone lives in America will know this, but outside, like, where you live determines what school system you're in. And there was a very good public school system. So I, my dad bought a house that, like, basically he couldn't afford. And just, he's an economist. He's good with money. He's good with stretching a dollar. Figured out a ma- way to make it work because education was paramount. So going into a good school system. So as long as I can remember, you know, when I asked like in first grade, why do I have to go to school? Oh, so you could go to the good middle school. So you could go to a good high school. So you could go to college. So you could get a job and buy a house, blah, blah, blah. That was all mapped out. So I believed that. And then when I went to college, it was because that's what you do. And I was pretty certain that if you don't go to college, you end up homeless. And that was like the most terrifying thing in the world. So I was like, yeah, I guess... And the thing that I look at in hindsight is it's really interesting because it's all part of what I would call a scam. We don't need to get into that. But like the fact that like it's basically illegal to not go to school all the way up until the last day of like yeah. 12th grade. And then you could just do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's so jarring. But well, you're 17. Of, you, you make great decisions, right? But it, But no one even tells you that. They, yeah. they make you feel because so much of this is invested in like the school's ability to say like, oh, these many people graduated and went to college for their numbers. So they have their recruiters saying like, oh, you don't know what you want to do. That's fine. You can figure it out. Like, and great, figure it out on our dime. Well, yeah. and you know, however many thousands of dollars a year, but yeah. because everyone's doing it, you're like, yeah, I guess, I guess that's what you do. Like, I don't, I don't know. And that was my thing. It was like, I don't know what I want to do. I have no idea what I want to do. Uh, I guess I'd want to do music, but like, I don't think I'm good enough to go to Berkeley or anything like that. My parents would have never supported that. Like, they're like, yeah, you want to go to Berkeley? Go get a job and then <laughs> figure it out. You know, I went to school not knowing what I wanted to do and just kind of failing at everything because I was just, I was just there. And, and I, I realized something like there were, there were people who were studying whatever field, let's say like journalism or, or English or whatever. And they were working at bars because they didn't get jobs once they were out of school. And I'm like, well, well, how come? Like, I thought that's, that was sort of the guarantee. That was the whole thing is that you'll get your job. And they're like, no, I, w- I guess I should have learned how to network better. And I'm yeah. like, well, how am I going to stand a chance? You know, when I'm doing like, philosophy or poli sci or whatever, you know, I was like, oh, I guess this looks okay against people where like, that's what they love. They love that as much as I love music. And that's where that started to turn. I was like, well, I'm staying in just making music all the time. Right. Maybe I'm better off just going home. Like, you know, see if I can live in my parents' basement and get a job and just do music in my free time, which my, you know, my parents weren't thrilled about. And they, I think they were worried I was just trying to be lazy, but I was like, no, I'm just extremely unhappy, you know? And, and working, working a full-time job and doing music was actually like the happiest I'd been in a really, really long time. Cause this is the first time that I felt like I had purpose. Like I was actually working towards something that mattered. I mean, there's no way that you could have possibly seen like the sort of web of enterprises and stuff that you guys have now, I wouldn't guess. No. Like, did you have a blueprint on how this was going to work out or you just were going for it? Well, when I was 14, I was like, you know what? What if I start a drum software company? And that, (laughs) like, no, no, not at all. Like what it was, was honestly, I was so lost and sort of devoid of purpose that all of a sudden having a, a full-time job and just doing music in my free time and being like, wait, 
I'm allowed to do this? Like that to me was amazing. I was like, no one told me that this was an option. So in my mind, I said, if I could just go out on tour in a van, I don't even care if we make money. Like I'll just, I'll just spend the money that I make from my job. I'll have made it like that to me, maybe naively, but at the time I was like, I'm good with that. That seems sure. good. I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind working. Like I didn't hate my job or anything. I thought it was kind of fun. Um, and, and it afforded me the time to work on music. And I was like, this isn't a bad gig. Like, again, you're like, like it beats a desk job, right? Like it, it and I knew I wouldn't do very well at one of those. And it seemed like everyone. But, had but I, the reason I asked is because I think you could, I mean, maybe you wouldn't now because you just, you know, you know that you don't have to, but like knowing you and your brother, like you could do very well at a desk job if you wanted to. I don't think, I don't know. I don't think I would do very well in those environments, you know? I think I think I'd be very poor in those environments. I've always been a bit of a dreamer, so I'm always like like you need to be chasing something. I like and it doesn't matter if you get it or not, but it's just fun to chase something, you know? It's fun to work towards something. So I think if I worked at a desk job at a company that I really believed in and I could yeah. see what I was doing like changing things or affecting things, sure. But if yeah. it was just sort of, well, and maybe the selling is, insurance or some. Bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah. like what, a, what a lot of my friends ended up doing. And, and I was just like, God, that sounds horrible. And then the way they would deal with it is just partying and, and stuff, which I wasn't particularly interested in. Like that, that dynamic just didn't seem very rewarding to me. No judgment, but it was just like, I knew that that wouldn't work for me. Right. So that's why I think I sort of gravitated more towards like, Hey, I don't mind working a job where I can sort of efficiently make enough money to get by. And then just in my free time, like now I have free time to do music with, I have a little bit of money to play with, to buy the music stuff that I want. And that was the thing that I got to chase. 